Welcome grade tens. This is physical science. My name is Gillian and today we're going to look at the basics of bonding. There's some things that we really do need to know how to use like our periodic table and there are facts that we need to know off by heart in order to have success in this area. So let's look at my overview and see what we're going to tackle today. So Periodic table is really upfront. A uh, periodic table is something like an old friend. Uh, you really need to know it in and out, and that is going to help you with putting together all sorts of things and answering questions. The second thing that we're going to have a look at is atomic structure and how that uh, helps bonding happen uh, because with particular uh, atomic structure we get particular bonding happening. Then there are types of bonds and there are three of them. There's covalent bonding, ionic bonding and metallic bonding. So metallic bonding we will do in a follow-up lesson. Uh, today we will have time for covalent bonding and ionic bonding. And then our representation of uh, bonding, because this is something which is really unseen, we can't even see it in an electron microscope. So uh, this is theory, it's highly theoretical science or chemistry, and so uh, we can't draw out the things, they become uh, quite big and unwieldy, so we have a way of representing or drawing out the bonds um, on paper, and so we're going to have a look at that as well. So let's head on to our periodic table. Our periodic table is really a very clever um, combination of elements. So elements are pure substances um, that occur in nature and uh, they have been um, experimented with and the structure sorted out and put into um, an order of how they behave. And um, it's really clever. It was by a Russian um, scientist, a chemist in the 1800s. Um, and so this is fantastic. So let's look at it. We have got groups. So over here, the groups are read along. So here are the groups, group one, group two, and group three, etc. So all along here, are, these are all the groups going down. Group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. The periods are on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they are read the other way. So it's just like a maths table. I'm going to change my pen color so that you can see. So period one is along there, period two is along there, period three along there, and it goes along. Okay, now Knowing what is a metal and what is a non-metal is really important. So we have, in our group one, we have from lithium down, we have got metals. So those are called the alkali metals. You can see it up here, the alkali metals. But those are metals, right, in group one. Group two, we also have metals. There's group two. Um, group two all the way down. They are called the alkaline earth metals. Uh, there's a bit in the middle that they are called the transition metals. So these, this, this purple lot here, so these are the transition metals. They are the weirdos. Though they are the rebels, they don't follow uh, particular rules, they just do their own thing and you'll come across them later on in grade 11 and grade 12. We look specifically at each individual one and at their chemistry. So those you don't have to worry about too much now. Then we've got uh, group 13 and uh, you'll see in group 13 you'll see there's a yellow line that goes along here. Can you see that there? Okay, so here's the yellow line, it's like steps, and that yellow line is um, telling us about the barrier um, between the metals and the non-metals. So this part that is on this side, they are all the non-metals. 
There's one that is excluded from here and that's hydrogen and it's popped on this side. So that is hydrogen. It is also a non-metal. And these, um, these groups, uh, these uh, groups of non-metals have names as well. So you'll see there is a green line over there. Those ones are called the halogens. They've got a special name. They're called the halogens. And then these ones over here, this, this, these are the kings. This is what all the elements aspire to. And this group here are the noble gases. Okay, noble gases. And of course, because they're gases, you can, I mean, you can tell that they are non-metals because they're gases. Okay, so noble gases, and um, they are the ones that are really very stable. They don't react, they're very inert. Um, they're quite boring, actually. Um, but all of these other substances, all of these other elements are going to react in order to try and be a noble gas. Right, I think that's uh, enough background for the moment, we're going to get back into the periodic table a little bit later. So let's have a look at atomic structure because atomic structure is very important. Every single element has got a very specific atomic structure. So if we take one of its atoms, so a single uh, base unit, of matter. It's called the atom. It is made up of subparticles, um, subatomic particles, and those subatomic particles, the numbers, the way that they're put together, is absolutely unique for the element um, that uh, we're looking at. Right, so let's look at the parts of these atoms. So in the center, we have these big red um, blobs. Now, this is an inaccurate diagram. Uh, the, the center of the atom is unbelievably small. In fact, atoms are very, very small. So this is an inaccurate representation of uh, what an atom looks like. But I need to draw them big enough so that you can see. So these red blobs in the middle here, um, they are part of what is called the nucleus. The nucleus. Nucleus is the really center of the atom. Now, in the nucleus, we will find two kinds of subatomic particles. The one is called a proton, and the proton has got a positive charge. Okay, there are other particles in the center of the atom, and they are called neutrons. Now, a neutron says what it is. You can see this word neutron, Neut neutral. It is a neutral particle. So it's neutral. This particle adds no um, uh, value to the charge of the atom. But what it does do is it adds mass. So it's got, um, it's got a specific mass and the more neutrons there are in the uh, nucleus, um, the, the, the greater mass uh, this atom is going to have. Now the neutrons, the number of neutrons, what they do do is uh, they vary from atom to atom with a specific element. So the element's neutral, um, it is a pure substance, um, and as the number of neutrons vary from atom to atom within an element, uh, we get what is called an isotope. So the isotope here is um, an important word that we need to know. It, um, it tells us that in, if we take a sample of an element of its atoms, we see that some behave one way and some uh, veer slightly off the, the normal behavior. And that is because their masses are different and that is called an isotope. Right, now that a nucleus is the very center of the atom, it is very, very small. So what gives the atom its volume? It is the electrons. And so these uh, particles that are represented here, they are the electrons, and we know that they have got a, um, a negative charge. Now, the number of protons tells us what kind of element 
we are dealing with. It's very unique, it's very specific. So if we go back to our periodic table, we'll see here what is called the atomic number. So if we look um, on this uh, periodic table, we'll see that there are numbers here. Can you see these numbers? Okay, so these numbers are called the atomic number. They tell us how many protons we can find in the nucleus of this specific element's atoms. So if we um, have a look at this uh, uh, atom that I have drawn here and we count, we see that I've got one, two, three. So I've got three protons in the center and we go back three. Oh, we've got lithium. So lithium has got three um, uh, protons in its uh, nucleus. Its atomic number is three. That tells us that if we're dealing with a neutral atom, which we are, we have to have three electrons. They have to balance. So um, we have a neutral a neutral atom here. This is lithium. Now, these electrons are uh, layered. They're layered from, um, uh, we call them orbitals, from the closest to the nucleus outwards. And as I said before, they give us the volume. We speak about atomic radius. So that would be atomic radius from the nucleus uh, right to the very edge of the, um, the, the, where the electrons are moving. Uh, they, these, these electrons um, are in layers of energy. So we call them orbitals. They will um, start uh, filling the, the orbitals from the, um, the closest to the nucleus. They've got the lower amount of energy. And the uh, electrons with more energy will then fill from the nucleus up. So these are orbitals, these circles, orbitals, OK? Now, this is, this is not how each orbital looks. We're going to look after the break. We'll see what the orbitals actually look like. But this is just to show you um, how they're filling. So we've got two. You can see this first orbital, one, two electrons in that orbital. Um, an orbital can only have two electrons. Sometimes they're represented by an arrow. And because they are moving in opposite directions, we represent them by arrows in the opposite direction. So you can see we've got one, two there. There's another one over here in the next orbital, one, two, next orbital. Now this one is what we would call the p orbitals. And the p orbitals have got a different shape. Um, and there are three of them. And each one takes two electrons. So that's why there's six here. But now what I want to show you is that we have got a very outer layer. And that outer layer is uh, the electrons that are free to bond. And that's why this is important. They are called valence electrons. Valence electrons. Now, valence electrons are the ones that are in the outer orbitals. And they are uh, free to bond. And so if we look at this one, we see that we have got this atom. We've got one single electron in its outer shell, um, in its valence shell. It will give this one away. Now, what is this atom that we're dealing with? Um, it's very difficult to count the number of um, protons there. So I'm going to count the number of electrons. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Let's check our periodic table. Eleven. Oh, there we go. That is sodium. So can we have a look? at these atoms. They're in the same uh, group, group one. We can see that both of them have got one valence electron, one electron to give away in bonding. And that is going to be, um, t that's going to tell us how these metals, both lithium and sodium, are going to respond in a bonding situation. They are at different sizes. They've got different masses, different atomic radii, but the outer structure is similar, and so they're going to behave in a similar way. Right, grade 10s, we're going to see you after the break. <laughs> 